This is Control Structure, episode 153 for March 26th, 2019. Less than nine months until Christmas, do you have your shopping done yet? This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs153 to see them. Uh, with, the, with the show today, uh, well, today slash this month slash whenever, uh, and I'm Andrew Bailey and Stephen. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Steve. So, it's been a while. It has been a while. I'm not quite sure what, maybe a month, maybe a month and a half? month and a half or something. Uh, but it looks different here now. Yes, it's very different. Uh, I've moved. Uh, I bought a house. You moved and didn't tell me? Uh, I thought I kept you afloat, maybe. <laughs> you did. Raspberry? 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 Do you have neighbors? Uh, Raspberry! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean to wake you back there. <laughs> so, so, uh, have you ever wanted to build a Raspberry Pi notebook? Like, an actual, like, book? But like a real notebook. Yeah. One with, with a wired one or a wireless one? Um, how about a papered one? One that looks like it has paper in it. Okay. Well, when I said wireless, I was thinking about the notebooks that in the, in the store for Walmart. You look at them for school supplies, and it's like, wireless notebook! <laughs> but yes, anyways, the Raspberry Pi notebook. Uh, so this guy was making a terminal-based uh, Raspberry Pi notebook, and he used the Pi Zero, and he 3D printed like an edges to it, so it kind of looks like the the pages of the book. And then the flat panels on either side to make up the binding. I believe he used uh, steel plates that he cut off of an old computer case. And it kind of looked like he... I don't know if it was leather or what he was he bounded in, but it did yeah. look like he had something he bounded in from what I could see in the video. So, yeah, this is the uh, spell book. So, yeah, it has, like, an actual keyboard you open up. It looks like, a you know, like any kind of laptop, but it actually looks like a small book. Mm-hmm. You open up your book and, and start typing away. But, yeah, it looks pretty cool to carry around. You can carry carry a book around and then it's actually a computer so it's actually really neat yeah so now for this episode's lol apple so uh let's see i think we've mentioned the content security policy header at some point uh it basically it's a header on your pages that tells the browser that you can only have scripts from these places you can only have images from these places fonts uh uh, was it iframe embeds? Mm -hmm. We had that at work once. The most horrible time ever. We had to use it to put an iframe through. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's a pretty useful thing to lock down, like what your page should do. Uh, in fact, it's so effective that uh, if you give Safari a uh, sort of like I want to say malformed or you know ill considered even uh, that. You can, like, you know, the built-in controls for audio and video mm -hmm. on web pages, that a content security policy can block the icons in those. Meaning it's basically bro blocking the browser's own content. Yes. So, like, yeah, you can, you know, go ahead and do that. It's just that you're, you know, like the seek bar and, like, the play and pause buttons that come built into the browser will not appear. So... Um, I don't know if this is something that you should consider. That's okay. We have auto playing videos, right? Yes, we unless you have Firefox. Yes, uh, or just like make your own custom controls. <laughs> so yeah, good times. Speaking about good times, generative adversarial networks are propagating. So this something doesn't exist. Uh, this person doesn't exist. This cat does not exist. Like these are basically. You know, I wouldn't even say pages. They're just like a, you know... It's literally the image. Yeah, a domain serving up a single image that, uh, you know, just gives back an image generated by uh, essentially AI. Uh, you know, the person version, you know, it's, it's not too bad. You know, if you, you know, shrink it down to like, say, a thumbnail for like, I don't know, like a uh, like a Steam avatar or something. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. There you go. That's like perfect. A little icon. Just keep going until you find one that someone that looks cool and picture. Yeah. 
See, uh, I have more trouble believing this one versus the cat one. This still looks like pictures I pulled off of Google, so yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, there's plenty of, you know, profile images out there that, you know, you can train an AI on. Um, it seems to, uh, like, the backgrounds are, like, slightly blurred. Mm-hmm. Like, especially if it's, like, an outdoorsy type one. Like, the trees are just, like, really, like, I'm not sure how to describe that it. That looks like an older Bill Gates there. Really? But the glasses, and then, like, more gray than he has. Uh, not not enough wrinkles, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, Gates is kind of wrinkly now. <laughs> um, so, as for the cat one, uh, some of them aren't bad. Others are, like, pure nightmare fuel. <laughs> so, I'm guessing it's because uh, fur... What in the world happened there? That one definitely looks generated. It looks well, like she's got, like, blood running down her or something. Well, no, it looks like someone decided to, like, use 16 colors for that. That might be, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I guess fur is, like, a little bit more difficult to generate. You know, like, especially, like, when it, I guess, when it tries to do multiple cats or something. Because, like, a lot of, you know, I, I think it even trained off of, uh, was it lol cats? With uh, huh. the actual text on the image. Oh, so you'd end up with cats with text in them? Yeah, it it looks like it's text, but it's not letters you recognize. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, like right there. I'm not sure what's going on with that one eye or the mouth. <laughs> so, yeah, especially with people there. It... <laughs> <laughs> it's a people cat. <laughs> so, so, yeah, if you keep on going on for a while, at least for me... Uh, back when I first saw this, you know, after a while, you can get one of the ones from, uh, you know, one of the wall cat sites. You know, I, I saw someone once where they were testing out this website. Uh, there was at like tech fest. They were proving that, uh, Kubernetes worked for deploying containers and keeping a site live. And they were, they changed out a picture of a cat. Anyways, they used this curl command that somehow returned an image in the curl command so you could see it in the command line. And you could just sit there and, like, ping it every half a second. So I'm, I'm like, this is perfect. That would be perfect for this. I'm not just sure fit. what that is, but it, I don't see a cat in there at all. Uh, it looks like dead fish or something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's the cat after they processed it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's an angry cat there. Yeah. With text. Yeah. It's like see, Russian or something. I, I, Look at the fangs on that thing. Yeah, it's like a vampire cat. And it's or got something. like this star thing going on behind it. Like, it's, it's in a time warp or whatever. Yeah. And it's saluting. Yeah, so, yeah, that text there, you can make out some E's. There's a B in there as well. But, yeah. Apparently it's... it thinks a cat looks like words. <laughs> or a painting or something. <laughs> so, someone's actually compiled a list of these sites. Um, and also there is This Startup Does Not Exist, which I'm pretty sure might just be like a manual input thing. Uh, but like it comes out like the same exact template and like some you know buzzwords attached uh, to a headline. Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of funny there, you know, you know it's a you know one of the bog standard templates. You know the uh, the clients of this company, then the people on the team, which sometimes there's like multiple uh, like CEOs. <laughs> Or like CFOs or something. Uh, it's but, just a big company. <laughs> yeah, of three people. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, so you know, this these are well, the other ones are generated by adversarial networks. So it's essentially one AI that generates something, and then there's another AI that you know says, "No, what are you talking about? This is totally not a person. Try again." <laughs> Uh, and like, I guess it's just a way to, for it to ping pong back and forth, be, you know, uh, so it can get better at what it's doing. It's a computer training computer. What could go wrong? Yeah, exactly. You yeah. after, after a while, they'll be simulating societies and everything. Yeah. With blockchains. <laughs> Cause it's a really good buzzword. <laughs> you, get ha- you have greater synergy when you use blockchains. Yes. So let's go with login forms. Uh, don't get clever with them. Uh, and also, dog and forms don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Sometimes. Uh, 
so you know, there's going around like I've noticed like on Google that like it'll ask you for like you know whatever your Gmail address is you hit you know like next uh-huh. then it asks you for your password um, that's a little wonky sometimes especially with password managers uh, which is something that you should be using uh, so you know this is a problem sometimes when uh, like a modal comes up on the page. Uh, so this causes, this also causes problems because not only do password managers sometimes not pick it up when you need to email from customer support, mm-hmm. like go to this page. It also means if my password manager, I save the URL for the login page. It doesn't actually take me to the login page. Yes. Um, so yeah, again, like hiding fields, uh, which, uh, you know, it's kind of like the Google thing where, you know, you fill out the first field and then after you finish that one, then the second one appears, um, which, you know, I've, I've seen, I want to say that I've seen it somewhere. I have seen it someplace too. I don't know where, but I have seen it. So, uh, and then, you know, don't split it across multiple pages. You mm. know, I'm not sure if like some U- UX research said that, oh, like, you should have as few things as possible on a page and just have more pages. I have a bank that splits it out. Well, they have, I think they have them in your security questions on one of the pages, too. So they have, like, three pages, and then they don't let you copy and paste, either. Mm. So then life just gets really fun. So, instead, just pretty much have a traditional login page with, you know, like, the login name and the password, like, the this just works. It's all of its up front. It has its own page. So just this is n- not something that needs to be messed with. So I've noticed a trend where there's a lot of misinformation with some of these designers and then some people actually think the password managers are bad and then they're intentionally going against it. like the bank I had was doing that. And I've seen one other example someplace else where there was it's just like they are going against them. Yeah. Right. So, uh, are you building a website? Uh, hold off on the JavaScript, please. Uh, here are some tips. So, if you, you know, for instance, need to, uh, like, click something to, like, expand something else, mm-hmm. uh, like, there's actual HTML elements that do that, that you don't need any JavaScript for. Uh, there's the checkbox and label trick to, like, do tabs. Or, you know, again, to, like, maybe expand something. Uh, You can even get clever with that and use that for modals uh, with just checkboxes. Mm -hmm. It's cool when you can just use CSS for stuff. Because that's part of the point of the article is less code you have, less debugging in things in the CSS. It's, like, either going to work or not work. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like, what the page, what the post said that... uh, you know, if you don't have any JavaScript, you don't need to debug JavaScript. <laughs> and, you know, debugging HTML is pretty simple. You know, like, if it doesn't work, it's pretty obvious that it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, and then also the uh, input, uh, the forms validation. So, like, if you want to say that something must be filled out, you stick a required attribute on that field. Uh, then you can also do regex uh on fields, like put a regular expression in there. You can also say like this is an email uh, or a phone number or something. And uh, like especially on uh, you know like on smartphones, like if you you know tap that field, it'll know. Oh, you're trying to enter in a phone number. Here's like a phone number mm-hmm. keypad. So you can't like put a you know like a letter like B in there. So and it also comes with uh, valid and invalid CSS selectors. Uh, and, uh, you can also do minimum and maximum length of those. Uh, and, you know, this guy says, you know, granted, there are some parts of the site that need JavaScript that cannot be done, you know, without it, which is like for only for a handful of pages. Mm-hmm. The rest of them are like really simple. It kind of gets done to using the right tool for the job and not over, not over complicating things. So, and speaking of, I really like the, uh, details and summary elements, uh, so, like, uh, let's see, I forget where it was that uh, said that, you know, you pro- should probably have, like, some kind of status page on your uh, web app. 
that says, you know, like some spits out some diagnostic information. Uh, so you can tell like from the site, oh, like there aren't any articles here or, or mm. your certificate is bad. Uh, so like uh, I especially did it for these certificates. Oh, they you have your expires in 64 days and yeah. things. Do you have like a, a alert system set up so you kind of get an email or whatever <sighs> or text or? I think the I think Let's Encrypt originally had that. Oh, okay. Uh, but I don't think I saw it last time. Mm. So you know, I can see. You know, I have one certificate, but it's at the end of two chains because the intermediate is uh, has a different signature on it. Okay. So, and like, I can see, you know, the details of this certificate, you know, click it open and say, okay, here's my alternate names uh-huh. on the certificate, you know, the actual date and time it, it expires, uh, let's see, the pin on that, which uh, ties in with another HTTP header, uh, and you, you know, even have the signatures on that as well, so, and issuer, you know, who mm-hmm. signed it, so... It's a pretty nice status page, and it has your uptime, too. Yep. One day, because you just moved in. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, the amount of free memory, which looks like I have quite a bit. Uh, the disk space, yeah, I should probably get on that a little bit. So, you know, it spits out all the files that can be, uh, you know, which are pretty much all blog post images. Uh-huh. So, comments and articles, fun stuff. Mm-hmm. That's pretty neat. I don't think you showed me that before. Was that something you just made, or...? It's... I think I've had it for a few months now. Okay. So, I, I swear I might I might have told you about that, or at least maybe showed it to you, but yeah, it's it's something that's kind of back there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so you, you need to create simple pages, because not everyone has a super powerful device, and or they aren't sitting next to the server. Uh, so... You know, if, you know, for instance, like you need to keep in mind that, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, your users might not have a top of the line uh, laptop with them to use this website. They might not have that shiny $1,000 smartphone uh, and they might be sort of out in the middle of nowhere. I was actually one of the people in my company that was kind of his theory. He's like, developers shouldn't get good machines. They should get really bad machines. Yeah. Uh so, uh, in fact, your app might not even need to be a single page application or a spa, as we've uh, mentioned before. Uh, you know, they're really good for like real time communication. Uh, but, you know, if you're just, say, you know, displaying like essentially like brochure type information uh, or a blog, you're probably not going to get much, too much out of a single page application approach. But that was interesting how they mentioned what GitHub does is they have the more traditional Rails app, but then they do have some other embedded apps inside of it too. So then it's kind of giving them the best tool for the situation. Yeah, like the best of both worlds where it makes sense. Um, so you might even go full on 1993 and go text only, uh, which uh, surprisingly quite a few news, uh, I don't know, like news sites have been doing. Uh, that have, you know, essentially started, you know, in a disaster, how will people get pretty important news? Because like when a disaster happens, either everyone's wanting to get on, uh, you know, to get to the news or, uh, and, or, uh, the network might be a little like Mm -hmm. overcrowded or down. Uh, so like it might have, you know, very slow backbone because like the main line got washed out or something. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if you could call this a, you know, hipster movement or something. <laughs> back to the text-based stuff. Yeah, back to old school. Uh, so do you have uh, tape or some cover on your lop- laptop webcam? Uh, not this one, but I have in the past my work one. Uh, next time you fly, you might want to have some tape handy in your carry-on luggage because sometimes those in-flight entertainment systems might have webcams too. Uh, so it's someone noticed this on uh, an American Airlines flight uh, that you know you look down in the uh, like the I think he said it was like in one like a first class or business class or mm-hmm. something. Those uh, entertainment systems are essentially tablets 
that like has essentially been customized, you know, like off the shop, off the shelf, pretty cheap ones, which, you know, I don't exactly blame them. Like this is an airline. Like, yeah. They need to do airline things. Mm-hmm. Like they, they're not exactly in the business of designing. You're just going to buy a tablet and stick it in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that means that if there's a webcam coming along for the ride, well, it's there. Uh, so, uh, you know, of course, the airlines claim that, yeah, we're not using these. You know, we don't have a plan to use these. Uh, although, you know, you can definitely take the more pessimistic approach and say, you know, you're in a big metal tube for 12 hours and the screen demands you must pay attention or you won't get food. <laughs> so, um but yeah, that's uh, you know another another camera looking at you, I guess. But uh, you might be looking at USB and wondering what in the world's going on. So you know, back in the olden days, you know, we had USB. Then they upgraded a few things to one point one. Then USB two came along, and oh man, that was so fast. It was fast. Uh, which you know got us along for like ten years or so. Uh, then we got USB 3, which was even faster, and even today is still plenty fast. Then they decided USB 3.1, and here's where things started to get a little sideways. So with USB 3.1, there were two flavors. USB 3.1 Gen 1, which was formerly USB 3.0, and USB 3.1 Gen 2, which was actually the faster, more improved version. So... Now we have USB 3.2 Gen 1, which is <laughs> the USB 3.1 Gen 1, a.k.a. USB 3.0. We have USB 3.2 Gen 2, which is the same as USB 3.1 Gen 2. But now we have USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2. I like the, uh, the customer branding of the one. It's Super Speed USB 10 GPS. <laughs> because Super Speed will sell. Yes, because it's faster. That's right. Uh, so instead of saying Gen 3, uh, why don't we just clear all this up and just like go back to simpler naming. Hey, you, if you're just USB 3.0, that should be fine. Okay? It does what you want. You know, Even if you have a USB 3.2 port, just say, yeah, you can stick in like a USB 3 or even a USB 2 thing in here. It'll work. Okay? Um, so the good part is, you know, as I said, USB 3.2 could mean 20 gigabit connection, a 10 gigabit, or even a five. It's a surprise every time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But then, uh, Intel has finally given the specification for Thunderbolt 3 to the USB implementers form. Essentially the, uh, group designed for designing all this nonsense, uh, for the next version of USB, uh, USB 4. Uh, note, this is not USB 4.0, but USB 4. Like, uh-huh. not even a space in there. <laughs> like, don't you do us this time. But, I mean, I have a suggestion. Let's say USB 3.3 Gen 2 X2 X2. Uh, or maybe USB 4 Gen 4. Who knows at this point? Um, so... Back last year, uh, NVIDIA released their new RTX cards that har- uh, did hardware-accelerated ray tracing, which I think we may have we mentioned. We did. Before. I think we looked at a game. Was it Doom? One of those older the games Quake. like that. Quake. There you go. And yeah. It was showing how it worked. Yep. Uh, which uh, uh, was made by a guy who used to work at NVIDIA. And then NVIDIA came around and said, hey, we could probably do this a little bit better. Then he's like, okay, it's on GitHub, have at it. Uh, Which, uh, I guess I'll have to include the link of that here. Uh, But then, uh, I think it was the Unreal Engine people decided to, uh, uh, you know, implement that in. And apparently someone's, like, made this really pretty, uh, I guess, I'm not sure if it's a short film or something, that uh, actually uses RTX cards uh, in real time. How do you render it? Yeah. Uh, so Microsoft continues to open source things, uh, like the calculator app now. That one I'm, I was really excited about when I heard it. I was like, that's a really neat one to see. I'm a little disappointed, though, that the history only starts when they opened it. Like, you can't actually go back through all of the history 
from like the beginning. You can only from see... like the eighties or something. Probably. Yeah, that that to me would have been cool. Like I would have been digging way back in there and seeing all the mess that was back in there. <laughs> Apparently, they don't want us to see what happened back then. Which, I mean, it's kind of sad, but I mean, you know, I guess that Microsoft only you know does product updates like for specific things uh, at specific times. So, like, I could imagine that, you know, like, for every version of Windows that is like, okay, we only have, like, three weeks to make improvements to mm -hmm. this. So, like, if someone's really passionate about it, yeah, go for it. And then, like, it'll actually be in the real calculator app in Windows. Yeah, which is pretty neat. So and there's been a lot of activity since January, too. Yeah, in fact, uh, as of now, there was activity seven hours ago, uh... So, like, you can actually look at the commit history here, and, uh, you know, it looks like it's pretty much just, uh, you know, people making pull requests, and that got merged in. So, uh, we can see here that 94.1% is C++, and 5.2% is C Sharp. So, so, yeah, you'd think that, you know, because of the new UI, like, it would be more like C Sharp or something, but... You know, I guess use what works, I legacy guess. Legacy code is expensive to rewrite. Yes. Especially if it works. Speaking of legacy code, how about Java? Uh, Java 12 uh, was uh, just released. And uh, with, you know, oh, you know, granted it's only been like six months since the last one. It has uh, some boatload of new features. Um, so it has, you know, uh, Unicode 11, which is essentially just more emoji and a few new... <laughs> A few new scripts with that. Um, let's see. Uh, allocation of old generation of Java Heap on alternate memory devices. Uh, this is pretty interesting in that uh, I, we talked once upon a time about essentially like memory that was non-volatile. So like if you like switched off your system, like it would still be there. Uh, this is essentially support to store like actual in memory objects hmm. in that interesting you know, in that space. So that would let you have a super fast restore from hibernation feature or something. More or less. Yeah. Um I'm really excited about the uh new uh cipher suites uh for uh TLS. So like HTTPS communication. Uh-huh. Uh like you know better uh cipher suites for that. Uh so I'm wondering like when my server will be able to, you know, get upgraded and use that. Uh, so it also supports a TLS 1.3. Uh, and apparently they threw this in 1.2 as well. Um, you know, depreciates a few things. Uh, but yeah, it's it's great that they're finally getting on the uh, rapid release treadmill, I guess. So now you're, where you're at your company, you guys still use JavaScript somewhat, or are you more just upper web at this point in time? Uh, well, it's kind of complicated. So, <laughs> so, uh, like the back end, <laughs> the back end scripts is essentially JavaScript, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with a, you know, proprietary API in order to, you know, access database, uh, objects. Uh, you know, of course, you know, the front end is all, you know, the normal JavaScript, CSS, HTML stuff. Um, but, uh. You know, granted, you know, this JavaScript on the back end, I'm pretty sure it's running within Java. Oh, yeah, this JavaScript uh, running there. Yeah, the JavaScript interpreter uh -huh. inside the JVM. Okay. Uh, and if, like, you know, for instance, if you have a database exception, you can sort of, you know, look back here. It's like, okay, this looks like an Oracle database, uh -huh. and it's and we're running in Tomcat. So. Okay. So, you, so d this doesn't directly affect you for the. Uh... Well, for at work, it directly affects right. the upgrade. I mean, yeah, it. I can play around with it, mm -hmm. you know. Here, I was curious about the rolling update and how that was working now, uh, from the perspective. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, you can go ahead and submit feedback on Reddit or on the Nexus TV, whichever. Uh, and don't forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day, so back up all your blogs uh, because apparently the MSDN blogs uh, apparently had a recent hiccup. Uh, and they were able to restore it. Uh, so Eric Lippert here was kind of, you know, a little peeved that uh, his blog went down on MSDN. Uh, so, you know, 
uh, let's see, he essentially says, you know, you know, thanks Microsoft. I would have appreciated a heads up about this. It's not like you don't know how to reach me or anything. Uh, but you know, fortunately, uh, his buddy Scott Hanselman uh, was able to, you know, call call in a few favors or whatever uh, and get that back going. Uh, but all that music on MySpace uh, that MySpace you know got famous for, um, apparently that's all gone now. Uh, apparently they were trying to migrate. <laughs> all, all the data over and something broke. Oops. And they didn't have a backup. Oh, hell. That's okay. <laughs> you know, no one uses MySpace anymore. Uh, pretty much. So, but, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, I, I'm not even sure, like, how many people had things, like, on MySpace that they didn't have anywhere else. So, I mean, it, it was, like, the mid two thousands, no one did backups. What are you gonna do? Have a thousand floppies of this stuff? <laughs> uh, so yeah, that seems to be about it for now. Uh, let's see. Uh, meanwhile, you know, my basement looks like a box museum, uh, which you saw down there. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, making good progress though. It already looks very nice. It just like you put away quite a bit of stuff in general. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to try to keep as much stuff in boxes as I, as I can and only get them out when I need them uh, because that way it'll be pretty obvious what stuff I don't use so I can get rid of easily. That's a fair point. So, uh, meanwhile, it might be nice to get the box springs upstairs. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah, anything going on with you? Oh, I was telling you in the, the pre-show about the... The pigs we have, and they're running around, having fun, breaking out, yep. and chasing them back. But, uh, yep, working on that, planning how we can maybe make better facilities for them, perhaps have more into, as time goes on. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, that windstorm pretty much blew everything away. Yes, yes, we had the windstorm, came by and picked up our goat shelter and threw it on top of our trailer, Yeah, which was pretty funny. It was big. Yeah, and it blew all the leaves away uh, <laughs> down here. Uh, unless it was like into a corner. So, uh, let's see. I, I think the power went off for a few minutes where, you know, back at the old place. Uh, I think my manager said it went out at his place for like, I don't know, six hours or something. I heard that some people were out for a t good time period. Oh, uh, yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, it's spring now. Yes. So, have fun with that. So, uh, so have a good one. You too.